here we are going to learn about some operations on sets. Now the first idea is the idea of union of two sets. Suppose we have a set A, okay. So let's say it is A, E, I, O, U, the set of all vowels, right. And we have set B, which is C, D, E, F, some four letters, right. Now the question is, how do we define the union of these two sets? We write A union B, okay. The U symbol represents union. The result is also a set. And what is that set going to contain? It is going to contain all elements in first set or second set or both. Okay. So, in fact, we can say it is the set of all elements in A or B or both. So, this will be so A, E, I, O, U, but you can't just say C, D, E, F because E is already listed. Okay. So, C, D, F. Remember, set must be well defined in the sense that item should not repeat. Okay. So, this is the union of the two sets. Okay. The next idea is what is known as the intersection where we say A intersection B. This is an inverted U and this is the set of all elements in both A and B. Okay. So, here what is the element or what are the elements that are in both sets? Clearly only small e is an element in both sets and this will be just the set with one element small e. That means for something to be in the intersection, okay. So, let us say capital C is A intersection B. If small c belongs to capital C, then small c belongs to A and small c belongs to B. Here, if I call this as some M, if M belongs to capital M, then M belongs to A or M belongs to B or it belongs to both or M belongs to A comma B. Okay. Now, so this is the definition of union and intersection which are operations on the sets. That means you take two sets, do something, then you get a result which is also a set. It is like addition or subtraction in arithmetic. Now, one way to understand the idea of union and intersection and other operations that we are going to see is what is known as the Venn diagram. Now, Venn diagram represents the elements in a set with overlapping circles, right? Elements of multiple sets particularly. So, if I have a set A and it has A, E, I, O, U. So, I can say A, I, E, O, U. Okay? A set B that has C, D, E, F. Now, but if I just put on circle and C, D, E, F, what is the point of Venn diagram? Because I can just write the set separately. I want to show that E overlaps in both. So, that means we will do a circle where C, D and F will be here and E will be like this. So, this is to say that this element belongs to both set A as well as set B. So, whatever is in this region, this region represents A intersection B. Now, the full set, whatever is there in all of these places, this represents A union B. So, the important idea is the element E is not listed twice. Please note, it is only listed once. So, if you just list all the elements in both the circles, you will get A union B. And going forward, when we do different operations on sets, Venn diagrams will become very useful. Now that we have learnt about some operations like union and intersection and also the Venn diagram, 
we are now ready to define something called a universal set. Okay. So, let us just continue with the example that we had. We had set A is A E I O U and set B is C D E F and we also represented it with Venn diagrams. Now, universal set is a set that is defined based on the context. Especially when you have two or more sets and you are doing union, intersection, etc. You are going to ask the question, what is the set that will contain all the objects in this category? Now, for the thing that we chose, we have letters of the alphabet. Now, the universal set, I am just going to use the stylized U to distinguish from the symbol for union, right? The universal set here would be the set of all letters in the English alphabet, right? So, which means A, B, C, D, etc. till Z would be the universal set because instead of just having capital A and B, suppose I have small C, uh, capital C, capital D, etc. and I do C union, D, A intersection, D, all of them will be subsets of the universal set. So, in a particular context, universal set should encompass every kind of set that you can possibly come up with with these operations, right? Of course, if you are dealing with natural numbers, if you say set A is 3, 5, 7 and set B is 2, 4, 10, 12, whatever dot dot dot, right? You can say the universal set could be all natural numbers. So, it is going to depend on the specific context. And what you will also notice is that now that we have started doing lot more operations etc., you are less likely to see sets that have a combination of number and letter. Still possible and operations are defined, but you are not going to see that you are not going to see a set of the form 1 comma e etc. and then do a union b and because then the question is what is the universal set? It is not clear. Maybe a set of all natural numbers and letters weird, right? So, we will not look at many of these things, right? Now, the idea of a universal set can also be represented with a Venn diagram, okay? So, you can say, okay, this we do not need, you can say A, B, so A will be this, so A will have A, I, O, U, this will be C, D and F and E will be common. Now, this box will represent all the letters in the alphabet. So, this is the universal set. That means, your sets capital A and capital B lie inside this big box. So, what are the letters that will lie outside the circles but inside the big box? For example, G, H, K, K M, etc. will be here. You do not have to list them. As long as you know what is the universal set, you can find what lies outside the individual sets, but part of your universal set. Now that we have learnt about some operations as well as the universal set, okay, we are ready to define some properties. Okay. So, let us say that we have sets capital A and capital B as well as the special sets null set as well as the universal set that we just defined. right? What are some of the properties we can write, for example, for union? Okay. Now, clearly, if you do A union B, it will be the same as B union A. Okay. Because whether you do it in this order or this order, it does not matter. Okay. Next, you can see that A union A will always be A because the set of elements in this or this means it is the same, right? Similarly, if you do A union null, you will get A because null does not add any elements to A. And finally, A union the universal set will always be the universal set because it should be in A or in universal set means this has all the elements. So, the result will be all the elements. Similarly, let us look at intersection. 
A intersection B can be written as B intersection A. Similarly, A intersection A will be A. The common elements between A and A will be A itself. A intersection null will be null because common between A and null is null. Null has no element. And finally, A intersection the universal set will be A itself. Okay. Now, one small extra idea is that the concepts of union and intersection can be defined for more than two sets. So, you can also have operations like A union B union C and A intersection B intersection C and the definition extends. A intersection B intersection C means a set that contains elements that are in A, B and C. Okay? Now, some properties that come when you have more than two sets is for example, if you do A union B union C. So, you have to know which to do first, right? But what you will find is this will be the same as A union B union C. This is the associative law, okay? This is the commutative law. Now, similarly for intersection, if you do A intersection B, then intersection C, you will get the same as A intersection B intersection C. The last idea we are going to learn in this concept is the idea of the complement of a set. Okay? So, suppose we have a set A which is let us say for example A E I O U. What is the complement of the set? Complement of A denoted by A dash or A bar both ideas are used both uh, representations are used is the set of all elements in the universal set but not in the set A. So, here if the universal set is the set of all letters right A, B, C till Z, A complement would be this is vowels so it will have all the consonants. B, C, D, F, G, H, I won't be there, J, etc. Till Z, of course, O and U will not be there, right? So, this is a complement. Now, in Venn diagram form, if you say this is the universal set and this is A, A complement is this region. Okay? If you have another set B, outside of B will be B complement, right? So, now given that we have learned some properties of union and intersection, we can also look at some properties of the complement. For example, if you take the null set, its complement will be the universal set, right? Similarly, the complement of the universal set will be the null set. 